today is an exciting day. We're getting our snow plow and blower, and we need it. I don't know if you can tell, but we are getting a lot of snow. We spoke with some of our neighbors yesterday, and one of their equipment is down, so we're gonna spend the day plowing out some people and plowing out us, too. He's going around to the other side. That red tractor looks so pretty against the snow. That's not gonna fit. Is it adjustable? What's that? It's too narrow. This is fine. It's narrow. Am I wrong? Hey, 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 no, 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 no. There we go. It's got a tape measure, Cody. Oh, yeah. 24. Same? Yeah, I'm getting old. <laughs> you can probably guess that stuff. <laughs> For those of you that hate the beeping, we love it because of the animals and kids and people running around and people who aren't used to equipment. We've got a lot of those. See, I don't know, you might have to shut it off and relieve the pressure. I haven't in the past. I've loaded the blade, so... size. Will that work? Yeah, I think we can rob, we can probably rob these guys off of here and use them. Aren't you smart? <laughs> I've done this before. <laughs> no, we, we'll, we'll just swap these over. Oh, okay. We'll spin these off so we'll get a couple more. Boy, in the nick of time, the snow plow just showed up. Problem is, is that it's, uh, the hoses, the ends, the fittings are not compatible with the quick attach that I have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap the hoses off the brush grapple get everything going. Uh, our neighbors, uh, we've got a new storm coming in, the snow's really starting to stack up and our neighbors, their um, equipment is all down. The snow blower's broken, all that. So looking forward to getting the plow over there and get them plowed out, see how it works. It's nine foot, so should make short work. That's one pass on a driveway, so that's just, just fabulous. So let's get those hoses swapped out. Pretty easy fix here, we'll just use these, they're both the same length, so we'll just use these hoses on the grapple. I'll just get the new end. Um, and that's just the way this stuff goes. You'd, I wish industry would spend more time standardizing things. You know, you engineers out there, this is all your fault. Well, it's not your fault, it's the, well, it's the, greedy, it's the greedy ones in the company that want to sell their own products. But uh, sure is makes it hard on the, on the end user when things are not standardized. Don't want to get any. That's the wrong hose there. Which one? Here's the one I want. Don't want to get any contamination in the hydraulic system. So just got to spin these guys out. So when I'm doing work like this, I make sure that I grab two wrenches, one metric and one standard. That way, anything that I come across, I'll, I'll have a fit for it. Goodness, no, looks like we've got these nice rings here to kind of mine the hoses or to tend the hoses. I think we just turned this into the ultimate snow machine. Man. So 
so the plow's working perfectly. Um, my neighbor, uh, his, his snowblower broke down and he's waiting on parts for it, so I'm gonna go and he's got a long drive, a couple miles. So I'm gonna go plow that out for him. Uh, it's, we'll test it out, see how it works. The UPS guys can't get down there, so they're leaving the, his packages uh, with us here, so I'm gonna deliver those as well. So I'll take you down there and we'll uh, try it out, see how the new plow works. Getting a little warm in here. Boy, that heater doesn't mess around. All right. Let's go try it out. Start a Jess driveway. His driveway is pretty long, it's probably a mile and a half. So uh, we'll just start right here. Jesus uttered those words over 2,000 years ago. It's been known by for generations as the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. You know, I have really um, uh, developed a friendship with my, with my neighbor Jeff. He's an extraordinary guy. I really is. I really, um, um, really care about him. And I'm so grateful to have such a, a good man and his wife, Alicia. Uh, they're just wonderful, wonderful people. And, and I'm not showing this to, to brag, oh, look what I did. You know, I went and I helped my neighbor out. What you haven't seen is, is all the times that Jeff came over and helped me plowed out our driveway, was always there. We've helped each other and, and we just, you know, it's nice. You, I have a litmus test to how, to how you can tell who your real friends are. And it's something like this. Let's say you're four hours away from home. It's like one o'clock in the morning. You break down in the middle of the night. Who could you call uh, that you just know would come and help you and, and not make you feel like you owed them something? Or, or that uh, there was going to be some payback. You know, when you start counting on your hands and your you know, your toes and fingers there, for many of us, there's not a lot of people that we could do that. They, they would come and, and to help you out and to, and to get you out of a bind um, and not make you feel like you owed them something or it was that you were in their debt. And Jeff is one of those people, and that to me is a, is a sign of, of true friendship. So uh, we really enjoy helping each other out, and we're going to do more things together. That big barn you see there in the back, uh, you won't believe it. If you've seen the movie The Martian, see, Jeff's really smart. He's a, um, uh, 
rocket scientist, astronaut smart. You know, he was in the astronaut program. He's an aerospace engineer, super motivated, super smart guy. Uh, and he's basically recreated what was in the biodome in the movie The Martian um, on his own property. And uh, while I was there, I got to um, give me a full tour. It just will blow your mind. Blow your mind what's in there. And, and I'll, if there's interest, I'll uh, upload that and share that with you as well. So um, I just wanted to share that with you. I'll, I'm going to do a more detailed video with the plow and we'll show some more of that. This, I just wanted to kind of get something up and to share, um, you know, just, to you know, fun to share your excitement. But, you know, back to the golden rule. Um, man, what a bit piece of advice. If our children left with that, uh, left our homes and they had nothing else, I mean, can you imagine how well that would serve us? Can you imagine how well our world, how much different it would be if everyone, regardless of religion, uh, would uh, simply adhere to that? You know, the thing that goes with that is, if we read on down, is, is, is do unto others as you'd have them do unto you, and love your neighbor as yourself. And Christians, I think, for centuries have struggled with that, trying to manufacture true love, agape love for someone that maybe they don't like, maybe a coworker, and they read the scripture and they get frustrated thinking, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm lying to God if I say that I love my neighbor, so obviously I must not be a Christian because I don't like this person that treats me bad. That's not what it means at all. Loving your neighbor as yourself, how do we love ourselves? Do we look in the mirror and say, oh, I love myself, I love everything about me, I'm such a stand-up guy? No, when we look at ourselves in the mirror, oftentimes there's things that we detest about ourselves, that we loathe about ourselves. Loving thyself as a neighbor is, what do you do, but how do you treat yourself? So it's not loving your neighbor, manufacturing something that doesn't exist, but to do for him or to do for her the things that you would do for yourself. Do you clothe yourself, even though you're ashamed of some of the things that you do? Do you feed yourself? Do you make sure that you have nice things and you make your life as comfortable as possible, provide the things for you that you need? What Christ is talking about is the same. If you provide food for your family, you have an obligation to provide food for your neighbor. If he is out, if he's down and out, if he's in a bind and, and things can't, he's not able to provide for himself. That's what that means. And once you begin to understand that, I mean, it really sets people free. You're like, oh, I don't have to try to pretend or lie to God that, that I have made up these feelings for someone that I don't really like. But regardless of your feelings, which are irrelevant, the thing that matters is that if your neighbor is in need, you look after him. You plow his driveway. He'll plow your driveway. Help them out if they don't have a job and they can't make the car payment can't buy fuel, fuel, fuel or, or maybe they need new tires for their car. Always be on the lookout for things like that. And I'll, think, I'll tell you what, I don't, I don't care what anyone says, I'll always believe it. You can give out of your own. There's giving out of your excess and there's giving out of your need. Giving out of your excess, meaning you have a little bit of extra income or something, giving it to someone, that, that is a nice thing, but it is not the same as giving something that you have that, that, that is taking food out of your own mouth. And what my experience has been in life, and, and God is so faithful with this, is that you can give to someone and it, it will come out. It will come all come out and you will end up having more than you had. Hence the scripture, cast your bread upon the waters. What God is telling us is, to try me, try me. You have $1,000 to get through the rest of the month and you don't know how you're going to do it. And your neighbor needs $100 to, get, to buy fuel to get to work for a week. Try him. Give him that 100 and see if you don't see if it doesn't come back to you more than what you thought. So I could, go, I could do a whole sermon on that, but I'm not a preacher and I probably should I probably talk too much. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video.